Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good and welcome to Tea Time with Lovely Tea Unfiltered. So I want to come on here and talk about all the mess that once again, our favorite drama king, honey, is involved in. So I know a lot of the sports fans were hitting me up and wanting to know my opinion on this, but we've been really focused on the coronavirus. But, you know, I wanted to take my mind off of all of that. So I'm here to talk about all of the drama going on in the sports world. So if you guys do not know, okay, Sierra Canyon, which is led by a black coach named Andre Savaye, and basically he's done a wonderful job, in my personal opinion, of coaching and doing what he has to do for these boys. This is a top tier school, lots of heavily recruited kids. You know, again, you got to have money. Um, so basically, let me, let me go ahead and rewind that back. So this is how everything started. So if you guys do not know, there's two Zaires that play on the Sierra Canyon team. One is Zaire Wade, which is Dwayne Wade's son. The other is Zaire Williams, who has been doing the damn thing for quite a while now, okay? They're both seniors. So we can call this the tale of two Zaires. So what's going down is this. Um, a few days ago, they were down to literally the last few seconds of the game. It was a tie. And what ended up happening is that Zaire Williams had the ball and he ended up making a game-winning shot literally at the buzzer. It was like literally two seconds left. He shot the ball. He got it in there, and the crowd went crazy. Y'all go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw that. So everybody was celebrating. Everybody was really happy for Zaire Williams. He's been doing his thing for a while now. And so Dwayne Wade, he took to social media when SportsCenter posted it, and this is what he wrote. He says, happy for Zaire Williams. This kid can hoop, but he's an even better kid away from basketball. The game continues to look bright with kids like him coming down the pipeline. So everybody was like, okay, you know, D-Wade showing some love. All right, cool. So then what ended up happening is that basically the very next day, he takes all that shine away from Zaire Williams when he decides to um, get on NBA on TNT and basically state to the world that he's not going to go to Sierra Canyon State game. And he's not doing that because his own son, Zaire Wade, is not getting enough playing time. So he's not going to go. And then he low-key threatens the coach, another black man on national television. This is just embarrassing. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Officially going to the state championship game nice. on a buzzer beater. Yes. Zaire Williams. Zaire Williams hit a big, big shot. Shout out to my kids, team, Sarah King. To the Yeah, that's a oh, wow. That's a good Shout out to Zaire Williams, Brandon Boston, Bronny James, Mari Bailey, all the kids, man, they deserve it. Will you be at the state championship game? I will not be there. Well, My good son luck ain't to them. In, and I don't want to do nothing to the coach, so I won't be there. We have wardrobe did. changes. <laughs> I think you just did do something. I won't be there, but I'll be rooting for the kids. Okay. The post game show continues. Message. Yikes. All right, so you guys just saw that video. I mean, this entire situation is a hot damn mess. And you can tell they were embarrassed at TNT. You know, they try to play it off and, you know, herp and cut to commercial. You know, D-Wade, you're doing a bit much. And and I've been calling out D-Wade's attention whoring for a while now. You guys think I call him out, you know, just to be mean. I am seeing through just all this nonsense, okay? Everything from what him and Gabrielle Union are doing with Zion to now this mess with Zaire. He is just doing way too much. This is my issue that I have with this, okay? The thing is, you've literally took away from Zaire Williams' moment. You've now made that game-winning shot 
about you and your son, Zaire Wade, when you said that you would not go to a game. I don't care if your son is sitting on the bench the whole game or he's one of the starters. When you're a team, this is what we teach our boys. There is no I in team. It's supposed to be a team effort. So regardless if he's getting playing time or not, he should have the attitude that he's there to support the team. And as a parent, you should have the attitude that you're also there to support the team. So a lot of folks started calling him out on social media. People were not feeling what he had to say. They were not feeling his antics at all. Another fan tweeted Dwayne, and this is what they said to him. They said, I used to respect at D. Wade. I used to respect at Dwayne Wade, but putting your son's coach on blast on national TV for not playing him is downright childish. Just because you're an NBA legend does not entitle your son to playing time for one of the best high schools in the nation. So in response to that, Dwayne Wade says this, your respect is not needed over here. Thanks for your years of service. Like, do you see how snappy and condescending he is? He doesn't want to take ownership the fact that what he did was wrong. And when people are holding him accountable for that, he's like, your respect is not needed. Thanks for your service. The Wayne Wade boy, bye. Have a seat. And on top of that, he kept talking about it. So then he took to social media and he said, for all the kids out there that's not getting the time or opportunity they feel they deserve, look no further than the GOAT at Tom Brady for some perspective. They drafted 198 players before him. Hashtag God's plan. So once again, throwing shade at the coach. He took it from, you know, TNT to social media. So once again, throwing shade at the coach and making it about his son. Okay. Now what D Wade needs to realize is this. I'm not taking anything away from Zaire Wade because at one point in time, Zaire Wade was doing his thing. That was when he was in Florida. Then you decided once again, Looking for attention, you took your child out of Florida. You took your child out of the school in Florida and you brought him to Sierra Canyon because, again, it's more attention. You have LeBron James Jr., who was LeBron's senior son, and then you have D. Wade's son at the same school. And then this was right before Scottie Pippen's son graduated last year. So, you know, all these, you know, major NBA players, children are all going to this school. That's why you did it. He was getting better playing time and more attention in Florida. But again, seeking bigger attention, they took him to Cali. And then what else happened is that, you know, Zaire hurt his ankle. And ever since he hurt his ankle, he just has not been able to bounce back in the way that he was before. Now, you guys all know I went to the Mini Haha Sierra Canyon game that was here in Minneapolis. They had basically did it at the Target Center where the Timberwolves play. And over 15,000 people were there. This was like one of the biggest games, high school games in the country. Sierra Canyon flew all the way in from Cali to play Mini Ha Ha Academy, and Mini Ha Ha Academy whooped that ass, okay? Shout out to Mini Ha Ha. All right, all right. Woo, Mini Ha Ha. All right, Mini Ha Ha did that. <laughs> I'm so proud of these young boys. They are doing the damn thing. You had Jalen Suggs out there. He's ranked number five on ESPN. You had Chet Holmgren out there. He's ranked second, okay, in the nation on the ESPN scoring list. So these are two of the top players in the nation. Jalen Suggs, who is a really cool dude. We got to meet him like two weeks ago, me and my youngest son, and he gave my youngest son all types of advice. Very smart kid, high GPA, overall talented in football and basketball. He makes me proud, especially being that he's from Minnesota and he's a dual athlete and very, very smart, very articulate young man. And he will make it into the NBA. Mark my words, him and Chet, they put in a lot of work since they were in the third grade. So my thing is this, those were two of the top players. And Mini Ha Ha Academy ended up beating them. But Sierra Canyon, they did good. You know, they definitely gave them a run for the money. Now, I recall Bronny, I think he played maybe eight to ten minutes. He scored about five points. You know, he kind of did his thing out there. But the people that, that really stood out to me on the Sierra Canyon team was um, BJ Boston and Zaire Williams. 
I, you know, I watched the game and I didn't see anything that Zaire Wade did that was memorable. I don't even know if he scored any points. I might be wrong. I don't remember. The ones I saw out there really hooping and putting in work was BJ and Zaire Williams, period. And Zaire Williams right now, he's ranked, he's ranked seventh in the nation on ESPN. So you're talking about a school that is stacked with top tier athletes, okay, of juniors and seniors. Now, Bronny's a freshman, so his stats, you know, really don't count because he still has another three to four years. But you're talking about a team that's stacked, and you're talking about a coach who's done a phenomenal job of having to deal with so many different personalities because you're also dealing with egos from the parents. And before y'all say that I'm dick riding the James and whatever else, you have to realize before Bronny ever came to Sierra Canyon, before there was ever a Bronny, because a lot of people are acting like Sierra Canyon has been put on the map because of Bronny. Absolutely not. Before there was ever a Bronny, let's not forget that Scottie Pippen Jr. was there. He played for Sierra Canyon. He did the damn thing. Um, Kenyon Martin, whose son is Cameron Martin, he also played for Sierra Canyon. He did the damn thing. Let's not forget Cassius Stanley. So they've always had a stacked team. They've always had some of the top players in Cali. But again, that's part of the problem. When you go to a stack team, you have to be just as good, if not better, because you're going to be fighting for that playing time. Because the coaches, his whole thing is, we want to win. And if your son is not up to par, he's slowing us down. He's going to be sitting on the bench. That's just how it goes. This is not elementary, you know, this is not elementary junior high basketball. They are trying to win. They're trying to take over. They're trying to win state. You know what I'm saying? So they're not going to slow down to make D-Wade comfortable. And I think part of the problem is D-Wade's ego is getting out of hand. He thinks if he shames the coach publicly, somehow that's supposed to put his son in a better position, and that's not going to work, okay? At this point, Zaire is average at best. And that's no disrespect because basketball is not easy. So I'm not saying that he's horrible. He, you know, he's been through a lot, especially with the injury, but he's not where he should be. He's not on the level of a Zaire Williams or a BJ. Now, him and Zaire Williams are the same age. They're both seniors. He's not on the same level as a Jalen Suggs. Let's keep that real. And I think that at this point, Dwayne Wade does not want to accept reality that his son is not where he needs to be. Maybe it came from the injury. Maybe it came from because there's so much talent at this school. Or maybe it also came from the fact that he might be feeling just, you know, overwhelmed with all the mess he's having to deal with on social media. Compliments of his father and his stepmother. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.